This is a kid who ascended the minor leagues faster than any other American player in over 25 years. And that's not a fluke. That's not a, a Tim Tebow move where you kind of see the PR working a little bit. He just crushed. We're going to charge the damn mound and welcome Jackson Holiday. <laughs> I mean, AJ, what he did for this week in the minor leagues has changed oh, his changed life. his trajectory. He looks like a completely different ball player. Everything changed his changed. trajectory. Remember in spring training, they're telling us, oh, we'd like some more second base reps, maybe some more reps against lefties. That's yep. it. One week. And he is the perfect ball player now. Do you know that he's like sixth or seventh in OPS on his AAA team? Yeah, I know. There's like dudes that are way – one guy has like 27 homers or RBIs already. <laughs> <laughs> we had 10 in one game. Was it Hirstead? Heston and Kirsten, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, he had, they, they he didn't had, want Jackson to lose too much confidence because he'd look at the stat board and be like, fuck. Oh, he, I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. Struggling. I'm only 1,077 OPS. But my, my whole thing is like I'm happy for Jackson Holiday. But the, we saw Tony Kemp got DFA'd. Like that, that signing never made sense to me because they had all these dudes that were prospects just churning through their minor league system. Why did they bring in Tony Kemp? He's the one, he's on the short of the stick. Like, I mean, I guess that's the only offer Tony Kemp had. But you're like, dang, man, why would you sign Tony Kemp if you're the Orioles? It doesn't make any sense. And here he is. Well, weekend, he's gone. $3 million, though, I think. Is that what it was? I think it was a million guaranteed. I, I got to double check. But you I take that, right. top father. You want to play for a week in the bigs and then – it's Especially you can get a mill. Exactly. And I remember I was trying to find a team. Just give me a million. Give me, give me something. I just want to get some time in there. Trying to get more, um, more playing time in there. Why not? Let's go. Yeah. All right. The player itself, the player himself, Kratz, and I like the orange hat you've got going on. The player himself is a stud. In fact, we do have a little clip that we'll show everyone from J.J. Cooper and Carlos Colazzo from Baseball America. Prospect profile segs that we do in our partnership with BA to get their take. It came out last night after the signing. So we have some word from two experts that have been following him. I actually said in the video for a long time, but then I thought back. I'm like, well, how long can it be? He's 20. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, here it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy how rapidly he's moved through the minors, the adjustments that he made pre-draft, how quickly he elevated himself to the number one prospect in the draft class, and then to the top prospect in all of baseball. What really sticks out with Jackson Holiday and has for years now is just how advanced his approach is. Maybe that's unsurprising, considering that his father was a great major league hitter in his own right, um, but just how well he's able to manage the strike zone draw his walks. He doesn't strike out a lot. And I'm still pretty high on the power. I know maybe the power is not the loudest, most explosive tool that he has right now. But if you look at him physically, I think more power is coming. I've consistently been pretty high on it. And I don't know if there's really any area where he doesn't do something well, JJ. Maybe you can speak to something that is more of a question mark, but he's just a very well-rounded, up-the-middle, polished hitter with more upside on the way in the power department for me. I completely agree with you. When you talk about the power, I think that that's something we're going to see. We're just not going to see it right away. I think right now what he is is an incredibly advanced hitter who should be able to work counts, not chase, get on base, steal bases, play great defense, especially at second base. All those things are there right now. But the thing about it is, is he's already mastered those skills. He's already mastering those skills at an age where many of his contemporaries are just hoping to get drafted. So the fact that he's big league ready now means that he gets to just stack on additional skill after skill after skill. When other players are worrying about trying to figure out how to hit class A or double A hit pitching, he's going to then say, okay, every offseason there'll be a new thing to add. Maybe this year it's going to be power. Maybe next year the arm gets a little better. But the well-rounded package he already has is going to make him an impact player, even as he adds further skills and tools. Good stuff from the BA crew. And Jackson Holiday's a Rookie of the Year candidate. It's not like he's coming up two months later. And, yes, getting called up in case, I guess I said signed by accident. He was signed at one point when he was the number one overall pick. But Dan Connolly, our friend who covers the Orioles, said it's 10 games after I would have done it, but no matter how. 
Holiday is still able to log 172 days of service time, meaning he would be PPI eligible and O's could still get a draft pick after the 2025 first round if Holiday either wins the AL Rookie of the Year or finishes top three in AL MVP. So in my mind, AJ, you kind of get best of both worlds, right? So if you do end up sending him down for an extra few days, he's going to lose the year of service time. You would hope that that's not going to be the case. But on the other end, if he wins Rookie of the Year, it's 300, whatever. Orioles get another first round pick, essentially. Yeah, it, everyone thought he should have made the team coming out of yeah. out, out of spring training, but they they also had a bunch of guys that were a little bit older in positions. Um, you know, Gunnar Henderson obviously is a shortstop. He hasn't played a lot of second base. He hasn't played a ton of third base in the minor leagues. He's been a shortstop, so you know that that's going to be the reason. The reason they didn't have him up in spring training, but I'm happy for him that he's there now. I hope he does very well. I obviously have known Jackson for a long time since I played with his dad 10 years ago and he was running around the St. Louis clubhouse with my son. And when I saw him in spring training, he's like, how's your son doing? You know, da, da, da. I'm like, man, this, we're getting old because like, I remember you when you were just a little pee jibber running around and here you are, you know, now you're in the big leagues. And so I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Matt. I'm happy for his family. Um, but you know, he should have been there after spring training. And, and like I said, the, the Tony Kemp and Tony Kemp's a good player, but the, it was questionable because of the depth that they had in the organization. Why would you bring in a veteran when they're all about young guys, young guys, young guys? Well, you know, here's another young guy coming and they have more on the way. So way to go Orioles. It's going to be electric when he does first play in Camden. I know they're on the road right now in Boston, but Camden yards, man, that's going to, that place is going to be rocking when he shows up that first game. Yeah. And Todd father, they have a triple a team that can beat some minor league or some major league teams that feel like <laughs> minor league teams. So th to me, this is like the first of probably at least three to four position players that will get called up throughout the season for the Orioles that could be all-stars within the next three years. Yeah, and it, it brings the excitement. Like the Orioles are good no matter what. Even if they didn't bring them up, now they're going to be great in my opinion. Uh, it actually puts a little pressure on these guys that are playing now. Let's go step up or shut up, Tom, because these guys that are hitting so well in the AAA uh, are dominating. So I, I just think this is going to kickstart. You know, it feels like you're halfway through the year. You bring somebody up. Now, all of a sudden, you got this revived energy. No, this is this is right away. I love every second about this. Um, you know, knowing his family background with Matt and playing with him with the Yankees, just upstanding family, upstanding gentleman. And I know he's going to be probably teary-eyed once he sees his son out there. And hey, lo and behold, he's got another son that's actually supposedly better than him. So all in the family, this is the greatest moment in the world for him. And uh, Camden Yards, be ready. You got, you got this dude right now. So this is exciting. Kratz, you know what I think happened? The Orioles looked at the box score of their 7-1 win over the Red Sox and said, great, we outscored them. We out hit him 13-2. You know, burn shoved. This was yesterday. Ramon Arias was at third base. He went one for five. He's hitting under a, a buck. Jordan Westberg is the future for us somewhere. Let's just put him at third base most of the time and get Jackson Holiday up here. Like, don't you think at some point the front office got together and they were like, what are we doing? I mean, we have a hole in the lineup. It's obvious. We're about to replace that dude with a guy every day that could play third and then put Jackson Holiday in there who might hit 300 in his first season. Or was it the fact that they didn't think the Yankees were very good and all of a sudden they looked up at the top of the standings and they said, wait a minute, we can't just cruise mm. to this division. Mm. It might be time for us to call all of our people up right now or at least someone else that should be up here. Like I said it when he got sent down. I had no problem with it. If the organization looks at his – defense and truly believes he needs work at second base because that's it's a key position it's no shortstop but it's a key position then you know what they are smarter than me because they've seen him play defense longer than I have but I also said if they call him up before some service manipulation date then I think it's a bad move well now they're looking at it and saying we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to win every game possible because the way the Yankees are pitching right now, especially without their ace, it, we're not gonna walk our way to this division. For the record, Kratz, they did call him up during a service time manipulation date because if they really needed him to marinate for a few weeks in the minors and get the reps at second and versus lefties, blah blah blah, 
it wouldn't have been a week and change. It would have been a few weeks. But if it was a few weeks, they would lose that opportunity to get that first round pick. So they are taking advantage of the rule here. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying if they really were doing what they were preaching, he wouldn't be up yet. Yeah, I, listen. That's I okay. have no problem with what I have no problem with what they did. They they saw an, a chance and they're going for it. Good for them. For me, the bigger story about this, I mean, obviously, holiday coming up. It's Corbin Burns. How what a start he's off doing. How well he pitched yesterday in an emotional day in Fenway. Goes out and shelves for seven innings, only gives up the one home run to Tyler O'Neill, who hit the ball off the windshield out there. But I mean, they're 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 they're, they're the <laughs> Orioles are in a good spot right now. Let's bring in our next guest, play by play reporter, host. Covers the Orioles for years now. Um, friend of ours, Melanie Newman, joining us right now. Melanie, great to have you on here for the first time, and happy Jackson Holiday to, Day to you. It, it's a jolly holiday in Boston for everybody, guys. <laughs> um, we were actually in the middle of a broadcast team dinner last night. It's a tradition when we're here in Boston. And I had to interrupt Ben McDonald. He was telling us a story, and I said, wait, there's a tweet that says breaking Orioles. Hang on a second. And of course, the news that it was ultimately Jackson coming up here. Um, so just a, a crazy last couple of hours that we've had, but what a what a wonderful day for Baltimore fans. You know, spoiled, really. They wanted Adley, they got Adley, but then they wanted Gunner. Now they got Gunner, but they wanted Jackson. And now, of course, they will get Jackson, all three of those number ones, uh, presumably on the field at the same time today. It, it's crazy to think that there's another number seven holiday after, of course, his dad wore it at Fenway in the World Series with the Cardinals. Yeah, they nailed their number one picks. Did you have any idea that he was going to be come up, coming up this quickly for the team? No. <laughs> I would have been <laughs> a lot more ready to go uh, if we had any inkling that this was going to be his moment. I mean, it's hard to deny, and we laugh. He has a 1,077 OPS, and he's sixth in Norfolk right now. Now, we also try to keep that in perspective. Their opening week was against a White Sox AAA affiliate that's come in a little weaker this year. But these kids' skills are undeniable. Mike Elias had mentioned that he wanted him to see more lefties in the minors before coming up, and you understand why. The first half of last year, the Orioles were in the top five for most lefties faced. They've already run into a gamut of them this year as well. And they also had some concerns, even though he's gotten some time at second base, he barely got those tough plays, turning double plays in spring training. And it's a little more of a blind position than for the shortstop. So making sure that he was ready to go, I know, was a really big component of theirs. Why is everyone just taking shots at the White Sox? It's just, you know, I'm tired of it, Melanie. We've never even talked to each other. <laughs> and, I mean, it's not, we're not even talking about a big league team here. I mean, maybe they just had a bad couple of days. I don't know. They gave up, like, 40 runs that one game. Here's had, I'm like, an RBI. i the numbers. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so then, so then since you know all about all, when I understand, I appreciate it, why now? Why, why, why now? Why, why, why sign Tony Kemp? If you're going to let him stay for 10 games and then be like, oh, yeah, by the way, we have this stud in the – why not just start with Jackson in the big leagues? You know, I, I really wish I could answer that, but I, I have no idea. What I will say – You can is, answer. You can. You can. You can. I can't guess. answer You can just I say, well, the White Sox – you can just say the White Sox, you know, made him look so good <laughs> that then we had to call him up. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I will say is um, we deserve to give roses to Tony Kemp tremendously. This is somebody who actually watched Jackson when Tony was still a Vanderbilt Commodore. And he was so um, giving of how he even knew then for Tiny Jackson that this kid had a big league swing. I mean, Matt talks about studying his son's swing when he was three and going, OK, he has a better swing than I do when he was in the middle of a slump. Um, but Tony was nothing but gracious. There's a reason why he's a multi Roberto Clemente nominee guy. He meshed with this clubhouse immediately. I just talked to him yesterday morning about having another day game. The Orioles have had a slew of those to start the season. Um, and, and, you know, he kind of came in aware that it was, it was a Tony versus Jackson situation. Um, but what a, what a wonderful guy. It, it's so hard when you see good guys having to leave and, and figure things out again. You know, they're so easy to root for, and, and I wish nothing but the best for Tony. Um, but, yeah, with Jackson, I, I really – I have no idea why now, why this moment. We saw Gunnar Henderson also debut on the road in Cleveland. Um, it's just one of those things that somehow keeps happening, and, and it's not within the moment where it would alter his service time or, or anything like that. So maybe they just – they saw enough. He got a double off of a lefty yesterday. They said they wanted him to see more lefties, and uh, the whole holiday clan is here today. 
Uh, I have a, Melanie, how are you, first and foremost? Good to see um, you. We're, we're doing okay. I got some sleep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I have a two-part question, kind of towards what we were just talking about. Could it be possible, and this is what Eric Kratz brought this up early, could it be possible seeing how the Yankees are doing so well right now is one of those moves where it's like, all right, you know, let's try and get ahead of them a little bit. It, it, this is our best player right here. And then my next question towards that, do you see – any other guys coming up because in triple a these guys are mashing down there right now yeah they are and you know what's crazy is our double a affiliate also opened up their season scoring 19 runs uh so it run, it runs really deep here for the orioles right now it's a nice change of pace uh to see how far that they have come in regards to the yankees i i don't see that being a factor to this they've always been really adamant they put the blinders on it's their club and their club alone everybody else can go out and do what they want uh, Michael Elias was actually asked about Juan Soto as was manager Brandon Hyde and they said good for them you know it wasn't a fit for the Orioles so they're not really going to be bothered by the fact that he is in another division opponents lineup right now and just doing their own thing we saw Grayson Rodriguez I think last year he had to rush a little bit to help the team after we lost some of our rotation due to injuries but, you know, Gunner was crushing, and so he comes up. The same thing for Adley. Maybe it was just that time for Jackson. I mean, this is a kid who ascended the minor leagues faster than any other American player in over 25 years. And that's not a fluke. That's not a, a Tim Tebow move where you kind of see the PR working a little bit. He just crushed. I mean, his weakest performance was when he was in Delmarva his rookie year. He hit 238. Other than that, you're hard-pressed to see him hitting below 300 at any stop. And, and what I love too is actually that his fielding at second base in Norfolk, again, small sample size, but to start this year has been better than his shortstop position. It's 938 versus 900. Um, and so you just hope that maybe with it being on the road, he gets to tuck into that alcove of the, the younger guys a little bit more. I think that's what bonded them so well last year was that they started such a long stretch on the road. You can kind of hide away from the local media frenzy and everything else. And that's coming. His home debut is slated for Friday and he will be facing a former teammate in DL hall as the Brewers rotation stands now. So it'll be there, but I do think too, maybe it's a little easier of a step forward just to come up on the road and, and get things going here, but they're not looking at anybody else in the standings right now. It's April. Some of these guys, especially the veterans have traditional slower starts been unusual like i said with all the day games a lot of bad weather in between but they love boston they see the ball really well off of that fenway green and so we'll see how these next two days go with them melanie what's the biggest concern right now with baltimore i feel like there's so many positive vibes but i just want to know what this team should be thinking about say come trade deadline time and you know what would kind of solidify them as the top team in baseball because they fell short last year they're super young but I do think yeah. winning windows come sooner than expected and they exit sooner than expected. It's really hard to see a short window with these guys. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And I didn't even cover that last question with how many guys are in Norfolk. So we'll dive into that here too. People have to move. Um, people have to get injured to see Kyle Stowers, who is crushing right now. Kobe Mayo, who's starting to profile like an Austin Riley. Connor Norby is a second baseman and, and, He's obviously blocked. There's there's Jackson Holiday here now at 20 years old. So if you lose a guy, I think they're in one of the better positions across the league because they have big league ready talent ready to go at the next level who are optimally performing right now. You look at the rotation and it's hard to be upset right now. Cole Irvin will go today. He got moved around so that Corbin Burns could stay on track. But Kyle Bradish is going to be joining Aberdeen. He'll get his rehab underway. John Means is in AAA Norfolk. Um, there's so much going on right now for this team. I, I can't recall seeing anything this stout in my life. And I came up through the minors. Now, I will say the one thing that you want to see right now is, you know, Austin Hayes has been battling being under the weather really the entire last month of spring training, the first week to start the season. His numbers haven't been there yet. So you would like to see him just being healthy, getting those reps in. Um, you know, being back to Austin Hayes, he started slow last year, but once he connected, he went on a 368 hot streak. That's what you want to see, because right now Colton Kowser is going to start challenging that he doesn't have to be that fourth outfielder anymore. This kid is completely different than the guy I met last year. You know, he's not timid anymore. He changed his body position, got his hands out away from him. He knows what he's doing. He loves the challenge. I asked him, I said, you've never been to Fenway. 
does that intimidate you at all? Like, what do you think about you're going to be playing in left? It's the monster. And he said, well, I played at JetBlue, which is Fenway South, and it's the same. And, and he just, he couldn't <laughs> be shaken by it at all. I mean, we see the game that he has yesterday. He's the first to drive in four runs since Cal Ripken Jr. did it at that age. Um, and, and so really, it, it's apart from seeing some of these vets get going a little bit, Cedric Mullins as well. That's where I put the concern right now. But otherwise, it's a very weird utopia they're living in. And, and to sum it up, what James McCann said yesterday was perfect. We walked off twice the week before. We got walked off twice this week by a very underrated Pittsburgh team. And that's just baseball. It happens. They flush it better than any other team I've seen. That really started with Robinson Chirinos and Rugnet Odor of this don't care. You're a big leaguer because you're here. So own it now. Um, and it's it's going to be an exciting run. I think they're going to adjust. They don't have Felix Bautista. That's why things kind of fell apart at the end last year. You also looked at their schedule down the stretch. They basically had 31 days straight without an off day going into the playoffs. That included West Coast travel. The schedule is a lot better stacked this year for them in terms of off days and travel. And so I think especially when you look at guys like Craig Kimbrell, been there, done that. Corbin Burns expects the playoffs every year. They're going to be in a lot better situation. The first guy that comes to my mind who's got a monster smile on his face right now is Brandon Hyde. So he's probably sitting there waking up this morning knowing what's going to happen and knowing in the future probably what's going to happen because if somebody does go down, they have somebody waiting in the wings that they should call up. Um, my question to you is, do, have they talked about where they're going to bat him in the lineup or anything like that? Have you heard news about that? Because that, to me, I would want to know. That's the exciting part about guy getting called up. Are they going to put him ninth? Is he going to play every day? Like, what, what is the consensus of what you're feeling? You know, we actually, we went around the table last night, again, at dinner that was now tremendously interrupted, <laughs> taking our bets at, at where we would see him. I, I think there's no doubt he's going to be that main second baseman. I love what our player development, Matt Blood, said, where – uh, to take Gunnar Henderson out of the shortstop role, you'd have to pry it out of his hands. He's a natural mm. at it. I've never seen anybody like this kid in my life at short. Um, the only other comparison I had was when we had Ender and Ciarte in his prime rehabbing with us in double A. It's just smooth. But Jackson works really well with him. Apart from the fact we're not going to be able to tell half of these guys apart from each other. Um, my guess would be the bottom end to get things started. Maybe, you know, seven, eight or nine. Cedric Mullins is really a guy who can move around because that's what you're going to have to pay attention to is not stacking three lefties in a row in that bottom half of the lineup. But I would say he's that primary second baseman for them. Keep him consistent, keep him going. Um, and yeah, the seven through nine spot seems to be where we're thinking for now. Melanie, before you go, I just want you to know you slandered my White Sox. I knew you grew up in Georgia <laughs> and you went to Troy. But listen, there's one thing that will not be accepted on this show. There will be no freaking Tim Tebow slander on this show, okay? <laughs> you can do, you can say bad things about the White Sox, but just because you're from Georgia and you don't like Florida doesn't mean you can slander Tim Tebow. So listen, I was at the Troy, Florida game where Tebow ran 65 on us in the rain. But I will also say this. I was one of the Fall League media coordinators when Tebow first stepped back into baseball, and I have never met a more gracious, wide-eyed, kind guy in my life he just really wanted to be there it was a very weirdly wholesome thing to see such an accomplished athlete go about that way i have no hate for tim tebow whatsoever okay that's a good answer that's we'd like to have you back on i just want to make sure that we settle that before we move move on the shrine was yeah. bubbling it was oh i had to get angry. up and grab it off the wall are you kidding me <laughs> I love it. Well, Melanie, enjoy the debut. We're excited to watch. Thank you for joining us. And everyone can follow Melanie also on uh, Twitter at Melanie uh, Lynn, L-Y-N-N-E-N. -N -E -N. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Thanks. It's going to be a good day here. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.